hearts, granting us joy and love that we search and we share with one another. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Are you the one to come, or should we await for another? Once again, we hear John's voice crying out. Yet today, it's not from the wilderness. It's not a voice proclaiming, prophesying God's presence near this reigning earth. It's not an invitation for transformation. Instead, we hear John's voice coming from a prison cell. A question crying out, are you the one who is to come, or should we wait for someone else, for another? This is a voice that I imagine most, if not all of us, can relate to. That question, that wondering, that feeling trapped or in a way in which we are in a prison cell where we can't hear or see God so readily. And where we have to call out to those closest to us who have a different perspective and to ask them, can you get a message out? Can you find out for me? Is Jesus the one or do I need to keep waiting? Do I need to keep prophesying? Do I need to keep along this mission or is my work done? Now we don't actually know John's intent behind the question, so... It's a little bit of a stretch there. But we, but we know this question well, this wondering. God, is it really you? Are you the one speaking to me? Are you the one guiding me? Am I on the right path? Or do I need to still keep searching? I don't know about you, but that resonates with me. Resonates with me. With me. I've been saying that word wrong all week. I don't know what, that, I don't know what that's about. That resonates with me. It resonates with our youth preacher who preached at the 9 o'clock service. She shared a little bit about her journey and her questionings, her searching in her spiritual life of, God, is this you? How can I find you in creation? How can I find you in the world? I can't quite see and feel you the way that I feel like maybe I should. So let me know, is this you? She shared about her journey. She shared about how she experienced God in creation. She invited everyone to consider, where do you experience God? Where do you pray? Where's your comfort level? Brielle shared how she likes to pray in a forest near a park near her home. She likes to walk barefoot in the forest and just experience the gift of nature. And she feels the divine presence most strongly there. I imagine many of us also experience God in creation. And sometimes when we're in the thick of winter, it's a little bit harder to do that. Brielle said that I can't really walk barefoot or I can't stay out quite as long because it's chilly. It's winter time, right? There's a way, well, technically it's still fall. Winter's coming, right? Um, But we celebrate this Advent season that the darkness in the world And we recognize that the days are shorter and darker and colder and the nights get longer. We recognize that sometimes it can be hard to hear and see God's presence so readily in the world. And we're reminded of this phenomena, this human phenomena, in our passage with John today, in our gospel passage. How many of us find ourselves from time to time in a prison cell? in a place in our life that maybe there is something hindering us from really hearing or seeing God in a way that we used to so freely. Last week, we had John out in the wilderness proclaiming the good news, proclaiming transformation through repentance. It was as though he could see everything clearly, and he was spreading the gospel. And then today, we have him confined and wondering and relying on the needs of others, relying on others to share the good news with him. And so John's disciples go to Jesus and say, we've got this question from John, are you the one, or should we keep waiting? And Jesus says, 
Share what you see, share what you hear. Those closest to John becomes John's eyes and ears. And Jesus says, the lame walk, the blind see, the dead are raised. Poor people, downtrodden, are brought good news that there is this transforming spirit of love and life that's being fed into the community, these healing miracles. And so we hope, I mean, it doesn't actually say, but we hope that they went back and shared that with John to say, yeah, indeed, he is the one. The wait is over. And we know that he's the one because we see God's presence, the hope, the love, the peace, the joy being spread in this world. We too, as we are searching in this darkened time, we look for those glimmers of hope, for the glimmer of joy, the glimmer of love. And sometimes it's actually easier to hear and see God in our darkest moments, right? Because, you know, in the dead thick of night, when it is dark and it is relatively silent, you can, you can hear the soft whisper of the Spirit. Or there's a way in which just a little flicker of the candlelight can shine so brightly. And that happens at night, in the quietness of night, when the distractions of day are taken away, when our attention and our awareness is heightened, when we're searching, we're yearning for that light, for that sound, we're seeking God. In the busyness of the day, it can be harder because the still, soft whisper is overdrowned, drowned out by the voices of the world, drowned out by the busyness of our life. And sometimes in the daytime, we need a loud voice to say, this is God, and I love you, right? In the daytime, it can be a little bit harder to hear and to see God's presence because that little, small flicker of a light doesn't quite shine as bright with the rest of the light around. And so this Advent season, this third Sunday of Advent, when we light the pink candle finally for joy, I don't know about you, but in my household, the girls have been waiting very, I don't know, patiently, impatiently, anticipating, can we light the pink candle? Is it time to light the pink candle yet? Can we light the pink candle? I really want to light the pink candle. When do we do the pink candle? Today's the day. And so this morning, they were so excited. We got to light the pink candle at breakfast. And then blow it out, because that's the fun part, right? You know? And then you got to light it again and let the other kid blow it out. But, you know, sometimes, so, so, sorry, there's one other thing I want to say about that. So I, I went to light the pink candle, and we've had our fair share of struggles with our Advent wreath and lighting over the weeks. Ryan, you did an amazing job today. You nailed it. That was just like money um but it it's a weird angle and uh if you know so i'm lighting trying to light our pink candle just at home and the wick was just a little too short or the wax was something whatever and it was this teeniest little flame and they're like why isn't it big like the two blue candles that have been burning for the past two weeks and so we had to light it. We had to kind of get the uh, fire around it, melt some of the wax down, scrape some of the wax out, really get a nice wick going. And then finally, you know, you really had that strong flame. Sometimes the joy in our life needs a little tending before it can burn brightly. Sometimes we need to take a little extra time to invest a little bit more heat or fire or attention to really get that wick in a place where our light can shine brightly and boldly. But the thing about joy is that joy is a gift from God. It's not like happiness, right? We all, you know, seeking happiness. Happiness is that, that feeling where we feel good and things are going well and maybe our, our desires are being met. But joy is something that we can experience, even a little spark of it, in the midst of everything being destroyed around us. Even amongst division, we can experience joy. Even amongst the despair of grief, we can have a spark and a glimmer of joy. Joy is a gift from God that is deeper than based upon our circumstances. It's not just, oh, I feel happy today. But it's this deep gratitude 
this perspective, this awareness, this assurance of God's love that we see throughout our community. It might be a child and something that they say or do, a grandkid, our pet, a loved one, a neighbor, a simple card that shows up at the right time or call or text. And you're like, yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yep, I needed that. And there's a little, a little spark of joy. And so I don't know where you are today. I don't know if you are like the John in the wilderness that is like, I see so clearly and I am proclaiming God from the mountaintops. Or if you more resonate with the John of today's gospel where you feel like, you know, I'm in kind of a dim, dark place. I do feel confined like I'm in a prison cell. I am not quite hearing and seeing God in the way I want or I used to. And that can be a vulnerable place. We have to rely on other people. But the good news is that John, as an example for us today, didn't just stay in that cell by himself and in that darkness by himself. He did ask. He did reach out. He had others around him who were able to say, we can be your eyes, we can be your ears. We can share what we see, what we hear, and that's what we're invited to do for one another. So whether you feel like you are searching for God, or perhaps you're in a place where you can share the love and joy of God, my question to you for this week is how can you, how can you, in what ways will you search for God? Will you share the love, the joy of God? that we're given this Advent season. This this love, we know that this love is of God, right? We hear our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, he always talks about that. If you want to see God, look for love. Look in the community. See how we are helping one another, even amongst division of our time, even amongst the challenges and struggles of our day-to-day life. We're here for one another. Let us be the eyes and ears for each other. Let us be that hand that gets extended out, that, that helping heart, that shoulder to cry on, another little candle to light to spread a little bit more light and love in this world. So I wonder, I wonder, how will you seek, how will you share God's love and God's joy this week? Amen.